1992, the then young international master Hannes Stefansson, who was on the verge of obtaining his grandmaster title in a couple of months, faced the seasoned international master Jelen from Slovenia. Stefansson, who was going to participate in over 10 chess Olympiads, one of the most important tournaments and by far the most important team tournament, won the Icelandic championship, the national championship title, not less than six times. And in this game, he chose a very sharp setup against the Sveshnikov variation and forced his opponent to blunder as early as move 14 in a decisive way. So let's dive into the game and see what the young master had prepared for his opponent. White plays first e4, black responds c5 and knight f3. Now black decided to play e6. However, as we are going to see, there was some sort of transposition. And this means basically that we arrive at the very same position of an opening with another move order. So the transposition is going to lead to the so-called Sveshnikov variation of the Sicilian defense. Let's see what it actually is and how we get there. Usually black plays second knight c6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and now e5, knight d, b5. As you can see, there is a weak square on d6, so black usually plays d6 himself, because now he also enjoys the coverage of the queen, so less weaknesses. Otherwise, the knight might just jump in, which wouldn't be that pleasant for black. So d6, and now there are plenty of moves white can play, but we just stick to the transposition. So bishop g5, and now comes Sveshnikov's idea. Sveshnikov was a strong Russian grandmaster who found a good idea in this position to make it actually playable. So he played or introduced a6 and the knight here has only one square to go and it's a3. All other squares are protected by black. So b5 with the idea to fork the two knights and win a piece. Therefore, white has to remove a knight. The question is when. As you can see, the d5 square looks pretty natural. So white can either play knight to d5 here, or like in the game, first take on f6. And this is what happened in the game. And something which is very important to understand here is that queen takes f6 is failing. It's not good because of knight to d5, attacking the queen, but also threatening to fork king and rook. So let's point this out. So queen goes back, defends the c7 square. The knight cannot fork yet, but there is a surprising sacrifice. Bishop takes b5, pawn takes b5, knight takes b5, and now white just renewed the threat of checking on c7. And this time the queen cannot take because there is another knight on d5 or b5. Depends on this perspective. So black could play queen a5, but after c3, he's not able to take on b5 because of this fork. And now even the queen is attacked and it's checked. So the queen is lost after the king moves somewhere, let's say like this. So generally this position is just very bad for black. And the black players found out that this bishop on f6 must be taken with the pawn. So black admits that he has no time to take back with the queen because it would be forced to go back and doesn't have the time as we have seen. So black just accepts the double pawns on the f file. Then knight d5 and we arrive in the position 
which appeared in the game. But let's go back to the game. So here, as we said, e6 was played, then came d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and knight to c6, the so-called two knights variation of the Sicilian defense. And now white has the choice basically between knight takes c6, b takes c6, and e5. And this position is very hard to play. It requires a lot of preparation. So the white player Stefansson decided to play knight d b5. And this is basically the invitation for transposition into the Shveshnikov variation. So again, as we can see, the d6 square is weak. Only once protected and twice controlled by white. So black wouldn't be able to Oh, yeah, can take here actually on d6, but this is not good for black. So black plays d6, and now comes bishop to f4, attacking the d6, pawn a third time, it's only defended twice, so black is forced to play e5, and bishop to g5. And this is the very same position, but the difference is, that in the other line we had this position on move 7 and here we have it on move 8. So a6 played, knight a3, b5 and now bishop takes f6 as we have seen already earlier, this time on move 10 and, and not 9 due to this idea of bishop f4, bishop g5. g takes f6 as we have discussed, knight d5. And now Black needs to play very actively, so f5, bishop to d3. The bishop seems to be passive here right now, but it might pose some threats against the castled king. And we will see this in the future. Bishop e6, white castles, and black plays bishop to g7, and white plays a very dangerous move for black, queen h5 and for some reason it looks like black missed some variations or mixed them up but we will take a look at this a little later so black decided to castle here and this move is basically losing because of e takes f5 giving up the defense of the d5 knight which can be taken on pre now by black so bishop takes d5 and now comes the idea of white dwarfs to play f6 and suddenly white is threatening checkmate by queen takes h7. So black has to do something about it. Plays e4 to break this diagonal. So no mate is threatened right now, but the g7 bishop is hanging. So f takes g7 and White is threatening to take on f8 with check, queening. However, the queen would be taken immediately, but the rook would be lost. So rook e8 was played here, and white took on d5. Right now, as you can see, white is just up a piece. And the issue is that after e takes d3, queen takes c6, white is still up a piece. So after b4, knight to c4, d takes e2, queen d5, black decided to resign. But how was it possible to get into this position? Let's go back. There is another variation here. We looked at castling. This is what Stephenson played. But there is this c3 line. And here, this very idea of queen h5, castling, e takes f5 is not working out that well because of bishop takes d5. So again, taking the knight, which is on pre, or seems to be on pre, then f6, now e4, f takes g7, again attacking the rook, but this time there's a nuance. Rook e8, queen takes d5, again, black is one piece down, but this time e takes d3 comes with check. So white is forced to deal with this somehow yeah play something like king f1 
or move it to somewhere else. And this is the reason or a possible reason why black opted for this one variation here with castling, but it turned out to be pretty bad. So what is your experience so far with or against the Sveshnikov variation? Did you know this particular Queen H5 line? Let me know in the comments section. See you in the next video. Bye.